former executive turned lifestyle entrepreneur, Connie is ridiculously dedicated to inspiring individuals to activate their power and live their dream as a lifestyle entrepreneur. It's time to sit down, lie down, or squat down and turn up the volume. Up or Out with Connie starts right now. Welcome to another episode of the Connie Fife Show. Now, remember, we are a bit raw and we could be a little bit edgy at times, but nonetheless, we are providing you tips and tools to keep growing your entrepreneurial business from today's top entrepreneurs themselves. Now, before we get to the show, I just want to let you know that we have opened up our year-end publicity campaign and that you, you're all invited to join us for 2019 because the show, let me tell you, the Connie Five Show is heard everywhere. We're hitting 190 networks. We're tracking 145 countries. Our potential listener base is just a mere 5.5 million listeners each month. And I'm thrilled to say we're continuing to grow because come January, we're going to be right back at it. We're adding another network. And I'm really excited to be announcing that really soon. So you want to make sure that you are taking Great, great, great care and taking advantage of this opportunity to get in front of your perfect clients because that's who's listening to the Connie Fife Show. It's those movers, those shakers, and sometimes those troublemakers, people just like you who are doing it differently, people who need you to guide them on their journey. So give us a shout out. Give the team a shout out at team Fife at fivegroup.com because my awesome team will definitely hook you up for the new year. So let's move on to today's show. So our guest is doing exactly that. He offers professional growth for ambitious leaders. He is creating efficient and systematic approaches to identify, hire, and cultivate team members who focus on specific roles and responsibilities. Now, if you're an entrepreneur, and if you're like me, and you are used to working in corporate and having, you know, everybody running around and taking care of you, and then you had to figure it out yourself, you need somebody like today's guest. He's a connector of personalities, brands, and he consistently is challenging himself to be a better human being. He's an amateur hockey player, which I want to learn more about, and a self-proclaimed starter geek, enjoying helping clients rediscover themselves, their company, and realize their why. He's with us today in the hot seat of the Connie Five Show, Jamie J. Hey, Jamie. Hey there. Thank you so much for having me. This is exciting. (laughs) <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad that you're here. Now, I was going through your information and let, let me, let's just say, let's just put it out there. You have a whole bunch of shit going on. I mean, you're, <laughs> you're, you're everywhere. <laughs> well, it's, it's, uh, yeah, a lots of work over the past uh, 12 years or so. It's funny that you say moving from corporate America because I left corporate America. It took me 12 years to figure out okay. how to leave. Um, but I finally left and went out on my own. And then I thought, yeah, you're right. It's it's kind of hard to navigate those waters uh, on your own. So uh, well, I, was I, I was there for almost 25 years. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yes. And social media, I had no clue what that even was. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you got to do what? I was like, oh, okay, we can figure this out. I know for me. For the first couple of years, uh, because I I remember calling my former assistant because I was trying to mail merge. And she laughed so hard. She's like, wait, I got to pick myself up off the floor. She's like, like, nobody mail merges. I'm like, well, I don't know. What am I supposed to do? (laughs) I, I made a commitment. I was going to learn an online business, an online platform. And that's what I did like for like two years. Mm. I, I was a seminar junkie. I was like, I was like this voracious. I'm like, I just got to learn. I got to learn. And I mean, that's I spent a lot of money to uh, <laughs> and along the way, but I had to do that. So this <clears> is what you're doing. So, and I mean that you're all over the place. I mean, you've worked with clients, Around the globe, I mean, the UK, Canada, the Philippines, Asia, Mexico, 
I, I mean, you're just like everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a uh, it's we you know we we with the onset of the World Wide Web now it's a mm-hmm. it's a global community so it's a uh, global global commerce right. uh, so yeah you have to just figure out you know what what drives you what uh, what keeps you motivated and what brings a smile to your face and brings a smile to other people's faces and and uh, just do what you love and and thankfully. Uh, with the World Wide Web and our global community, how it is, um, we're able to kind of create what we want. Exactly, exactly. And and that's why you see more and more people stepping out on their own. I I mean, this was two years ago that by 2018, it was going to be like 40% of the population were going to be putting up their own shingle and be entrepreneurs. And I wasn't quite sure if we hit that number this year, but I did see um, this morning was on Facebook and we know everything on Facebook is truthful, but I see on Facebook this morning that, I mean, that, that number is pretty, pretty close. To, to what it is, and, and it continues, continues to grow. So that's what you're doing, you know, with your company, and you're responsible for growing and, and leading multiple management, including sales and the operations teams. With, mm-hmm. now, is that within companies, or how, how does that work, that with what you're doing? Yeah, so that's a great idea. So, I, I mean, a, a, a comment, and thank you so much again for having me on and giving me an opportunity to share because I think what we're doing really has a place in this time and age of, of where we're headed. I mean, if you think back just what, 20, 30 years ago, heck, I don't even know if ATMs were around then, right? So we've seen a huge, huge shift as far as technology is concerned right. now before like 20, 30 years ago. It's just drastically changing all the time. It's it's constant. It's constant. Um, Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, I'll I'll go to do something. And I mean, even all these years, for example, YouTube, and and I'll have to admit, I I mean, I I played in YouTube, but I really wasn't there. Mm. And now that we're even taking the show to the next level, we're like, okay, we, we, you know, we need to notch it up even on YouTube. So, I've become of the, I need to know what's going on and then I'll pass it off to somebody because for a while I was passing it off to somebody without understanding and I got myself in trouble because they weren't doing Mm. what I needed them to be doing. So I want to figure it out myself first. So I like dove right into YouTube, but it was just interesting. Okay, I got to do this, but before you do that, you got to do this. And before you do that, you got to, but I'm like, good Lord. And I'm like, (laughs) I'm over the place. But I figured it out. And my YouTube page, I just think, looks smushing right now. Um, oh, fantastic. <laughs> I know. And I even learned Canva. And I did all of my own graphics for Canva. And everything looks... Oh. Yeah, I did it, my, did it myself. But with you, with creating those teams, so what do you think is the most important to someone who's either starting out? I, I like to work with people who's, you know, have their foot in the door for a couple of years and say, okay, I know what it is that I need to be doing. How do I now take it to that next, that next level? So what would you suggest is the first thing that they should be looking at to really scale their business? That's a great question. I think, I think you just kind of answered that. (laughs) One of my mantras is do something as if it's the last time you're ever going to do it. Mm. What that means is that you record the steps of everything that you're doing, literally step by step. Mm. And I call that, yeah, I call this a delegation roadmap. You list out all the tasks that you're doing right. and you assign two values to it. One value is, does it give you energy or does it not? The second value is, is this something that you need to do or can you delegate the task? Right. Mm. And one of the biggest problems we have when we're talking about scalability is scaling for success. One of the biggest dis- disconnects that many Many of us as business leaders have is that we need a rock star to come in and just handle all the stuff for us so that we can concentrate on growing our business, concentrate on that high level stuff. Right. And they'll handle all the details. The challenge is you, Connie, mm-hmm. you're the only Connie right. five. You're the only Connie five, right? right. There's never going to be another Connie five. Now, there's always going to be people that know more about certain things or less about mm-hmm. certain, but there's never going to be the same Connie five. There's never going to be the Connie five brand. Right. So there's three things that that make up Connie 5. Your brand integrity, your tone and your voice. Mm-hmm. How in the heck are you going to have somebody come in and help you without being able to delegate delegate to them confidently 
maintaining your brand integrity, right. your tone, and your voice, unless, like you said, mm-hmm. you've done it yourself. You have a certain way of doing it. Many people use software. Software mm-hmm. companies are huge. And there's, you know, there's the hub spots or there's the whatever for project right. management, whatever you choose to use. There's many people using that same software. However, you can go to every single one of those users and they use it in a different way. Yeah. Once they log in and they start mm-hmm. that journey, there's all kinds of different ways. So what I recommend is you go in, do something as if it's the last time you're going to do it, learn, yes. record that process so that you can literally hand off to somebody to come in and help you do those tasks that don't bring you energy, but are very, very integral and important with regards to the success of your company. So that's what right. we do. That's, oh, okay. the, that's the first thing that I recommend people do. Okay. They go and they get that, they mind map or they get the process and right. the systems, the actual workflows, get that done first. And, and that's why I say I like to work with people that have stepped in, you know, stepped into the business for a couple of years because mm. I want them to have experienced it already. And, and like I said, I, I, and I do that intentionally from experience hmm. because like I said, initially I was like, I-, I have no idea how to do this. Well, I'm just going to hire somebody and you know, they're just going to do it and they're going to come back. Well, and, th- and then I wasn't minding the store. I wasn't paying attention. Cause I was like, Oh, well, I'm just going to be out speaking and writing my book and I'm trusting that somebody else is, is doing it the right way. Well, then later to find out that they were not doing it the right way hmm. And I didn't know better. I didn't know the, even the right questions to ask. And that's the one thing that I do when I work with my clients. Because I have clients that will say the same thing to me right now. They're like, I'm paying you. You just do it. Just have your team do it. And I will say, no, I, we are not going to just do it unless you understand that. So I have them go through. Every Thursday night, I, it doesn't matter what level you're at, I have them go through. We talk about the legalities of having a business. Make sure it's set up the correct way. Make sure your trademarks are set up the correct way. That's what happened to me. It was a trademark issue that I thought was filed and we had, and it turned out that we didn't. Well, it was filed, but it, it wasn't complete. So that... And so I talk about those pieces, the legalities of making sure you have a right budget, but most importantly, make sure you're asking the right questions. And if you don't don't know what you don't know. Right. And if, even if you don't know, ask anyway, it doesn't matter. And I even tell them, even with my team, when you're working with the team, I want you to ask questions Mm -hmm. because they might do something for Jay or Jamie, but it's not good for them. And, mm-hmm. you know, as you said, everybody does it a different way. And it's your brand. It's it's your your integrity that you want to make sure that you're doing with that. So great advice. Love that. Love that. Great, great, great advice. So your company is Bottleneck Virtual Assistance. So what is that? I, I, when I hear bottleneck, I, I, I think of I'm going to go have a beer. But what <laughs> is Bottleneck Virtual Assistance? Well, being where you're from in Southern California, you can definitely understand traffic jams and the bottlenecks that happen. Oh, them, good Lord, yes. Right? <laughs> Same thing happens in business. And half the time, it's you and me. It's the business leader that creates the bottleneck. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times, we have to make sure that we're that checks and balances. So everything has to flow through us and nothing can happen until we give approval. Right. And while there is certain justifications for this mm-hmm. it also goes back to what we just talked about in creating your systems your processes your your step by step workflows mm-hmm. because what you're doing there is you're actually setting up a building an extra lane uh to stick with that analogy for a second we're building that extra lane to give our team the right the the um the opportunity mm-hmm. to create knowing that it's within the parameters of yeah. our our integrity, our tone, and our voice. Mm-hmm. That's why it's so important to create all of that. The number one problem, the number one reason why relationships, professional relationships don't work out is because the expectations were not clearly demonstrated and right. or defined. There's no clarity. There is a get this done mentality right now. Right. Like, I'm so busy, just get this done. Yep. Well, 
stop, time out. (laughs) While there is still hope for you out there that are too busy (laughs) to train or anything like that, you still have to have some kind of a mechanism that's going to be able to help you navigate these crazy waterways. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what bottleneck is for. We help stop the bottleneck in your business. And we do this through three different ways. We do what we call is a six-step hiring formula. And over the 12 years that we've been doing this, we've learned a thing or two about hiring. Slow to hire, quick to fire. Yeah. It costs in, right now uh, $4,192 or $4,129 to hire somebody across on average in the U.S. Mm-hmm. It costs up to nine months of salary to fire somebody. Right. These are staggering numbers. Mm-hmm. And the reason, the reason why is because, and this happens a lot when you let someone go or they decide to leave, it's because there was no clarity. There was no process for them to follow. Right. And a lot of times it's our fault as leaders. Yeah. We mm-hmm. didn't do it. Right. So what we do is a six up tiring formula. We really spend a lot of time upfront with our clients to make sure, heck, Do they even know if they're ready to hire someone yet? Is there something they can do to to make things easier on themselves? So we help with that. But if they are ready to hire somebody, we start off with the six steps. The first step is a delegation roadmap that we talked about. The second step is when you go through that delegation roadmap and you take all of the tasks that just do not give you energy and you can definitely delegate, maybe checking email, whatever that may be. Mm -hmm. Well, now all of a sudden you take all of those items And you create a job role, which is the second step. We go through and show you how to create a job role. And it's amazing, but I would say most of the clients we work with, they want to hire somebody, but they don't have a job role. So we go through that process and show them how to do that. Yeah, I I believe that. And like I said, with me, I had a clean house. I had a lot of people go. And then I had a gap because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And so I had that gap, but then I said, okay, what did I do when I was sitting in corporate? I, I, had, I had to put that, that hat back on. I had processes in place. We had job descriptions. Mm-hmm. And, the, and I, mean, I even took a step further where, you know, created a strategic goal for the business, three years, five years, and then laid out, these are the parameters of the business. This is who Connie is, because I'm the brand, who, what I do, what I can offer. And these are my correct titles, because that was the other thing, too. They weren't using my correct title, mm. what I had before. And so I laid all of that out and said, these are the parameters. And yeah, I took my time hiring somebody back on, but that left me like a six-month gap of no shows or I was trying to do it myself and it was kind of like okay <laughs> yeah. I, I can empathize I knew, I knew what I had to do but I just couldn't do it <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> so yes yeah, so it was crazy so what are some of the other parameters that you work with oh uh, well that was the second step the job right. roles and responsibilities okay. so the third step is how to run and manage a good meeting. Um, and and I, I, I've done this hundreds of times. Uh, for me, I have 14 staff that work internally here and we meet twice a week. We meet on Tuesday with the entire team. Okay. And then we meet on Thursday with a marketing team. Um, but we meet weekly. So we're always updating. And a lot of times I have my staff or someone on the staff run the meetings just to kind of change things up and just have right. fun with it. And we really, really, really like to involve a good, strong uh, company culture here. And that's what we try to do for our clients as well. Okay. And then in these so meetings. I have a question with that. Yes. Your meetings. Mm-hmm. So are all of your 14 staff all in the same location or are they virtual? We're 100% virtual. We practice what we preach here. Okay. All and right. So in meetings, it's through technology. We do, yep. We do it through Zoom. Okay. Yep, we do it through Zoom and okay. we all pop on the screen there and we see each other. What's, what's kind of ironic is I've never met them in person, but we've been together. My longest uh, uh, staff member has been with me for over five years. Um, wow. It's pretty exciting. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah, my so we've current ones really I've good... never met. They're all virtual and I have yeah. not met any of my current ones. Yeah. Yeah. That's, it's pretty, it's getting more and more. Um, yes. widely accepted. Right. And uh, so, so then what we do is in our meetings, we spend the first half, these are our action items. Okay. okay. 
cover over what happened last meeting mm-hmm. and then what's coming up next. Got and then this helps uh, infuse accountability, which is really strong. And so we do uh, videos on this. And then the fourth step is how to give a good interview. I mean, that's pretty important. Mm. How do you uncover what it is you need to uncover in a very short amount of time when you've never met somebody before? And so we go through that. And then the fifth step is the agreement that we have so that, again, I, re- I fall back on expectations. It's all about expectations. And I want to be crystal clear and transparent with that. Mm-hmm. And then the sixth and final step is, okay, you've decided to hire somebody now what? It's day one. <laughs> right. So we help kind of kind of push them along and say, okay, here you go. You're you're ready to go. And then while this is happening, um, we source, uh, we'll get an opportunity and we'll source for them. So that saves them time. So it's seven to 10 days for us to find three candidates for them to interview. Huh? And during this time, they're going through the onboarding right. uh, six-step formula. Mm-hmm. Well, our candidates come in and they do a four-step hiring process. And this week, the, only about 25% of the people that uh, are candidates that apply actually right. finish our application. And we set it up that way on purpose because there's some problem solving and things like that. And if somebody emails us and say, hey, I can't figure this section out. Can you help me? We're, we'll gladly help them. But then they're kind of not the right person for the job because mm-hmm. we need to make sure we vet them. And we need to make sure that they're going to be good because this is remote. It's going to be technology based. Right. Uh, we need to make sure that they can figure things out to help our clients. Right. right. And then the other three steps of the, of the vetting process is they are from the Philippines. So the first thing that people ask, do they speak English? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a big question. Right. Yeah. yeah. So we make sure that they speak English, read okay. and write it, and more importantly, comprehend it. Okay. Um, and we only hire college graduates. And the reason why 100% of the universities in, Fe- in Philippines are taught in English. All of their signs are in English. There's so many different dialects in their Philippines that often they don't understand the different dialects, so they'll speak in English to one another mm-hmm. to understand. Right. The second thing that we've had, oh, go ahead. Oh, so is there a certain industries that you, that you work with that you find that you, you know, you're, you're fitting these people into? Is there certain industries that you work with? Most definitely. Um, we're really, we're, we're actually just launching a new niche. So we have several niches that we work with, but the new niche is going to be in the medical industry, uh, which okay. is really exciting. So we're doing general VA uh, assignments for pre-verifications on insurance v- uh, verification for el- eligibility and benefits. The okay. same as, uh, private practices a ton of money because insurance companies are so crazy yes. <laughs> that it's really hard to figure all that stuff out. So we help train for that. And then the other one is Ooh. a virtual scribe. So a lot of times uh, when a physician walks into an office, um, they will, they're will they the only ones that can diagnose. Right? Right. Nobody else can diagnose. Right. But then they have to go either at the end of the day for an extra, and this is, I found, about two hours writing down their progress notes and mm-hmm. listening to their audio, you know, of uh, their little recording device and writing all that down. Um, some hire a scribe to come in and they'll be taking notes for them, which helps save time, but it's right. very expensive. So what we've done is we've created a virtual scribe where they can bring in the iPad and they'll have a virtual scribe right there that will take the notes for them, put it into their, into their software for billing and all of that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And then the doctor doesn't have to worry about taking these extra two day, two hours of progress notes. And instead, he can have his medical assistant fill that with another three, four, five visits right. every day. Um, it's, so it's huge. And, that, and, and then some of the other industries we work with, we work with real estate, we work with obviously entrepreneurs, a lot of entrepreneurs okay. um, running their businesses, speakers, things like that. Okay. 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 I'll have to keep that in mind because I work with several, several doctors. So. Yeah. I, I know we could keep talking about that, but I want to go back to um, something that jumped out at me because my all-time favorite movie is Top Gun. And you were oh. selected to speak, but you were awarded the Top Gun Consulting Maverick Award for your outstanding marketing performance. So what was that? Oh, that was neat. That was that was a few years back, and, and uh, I was invited to San Diego uh, to talk on a marketing panel. 
And it was pretty exciting uh, to be awarded and be recognized for uh, someone that had been uh, helping so many other people uh, grow their brands and help them market and stuff like that. I, I, I used to own a creative web agency. Mm-hmm. Um, so I did a lot of the, the web design and branding and things like that for various companies. And, and we've kind of moved. I'm refocused. This was one of my challenges is I had so many things going off and I call it ESS, entrepreneurial squirrel syndrome. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was going left and right, north, south, everywhere. And finally uh, decided to focus and just spend all my time um, helping companies scale through bottleneck. Okay. Love that. Love that. Love that. So, um, so yeah, definitely love that when I saw that the top Gun yeah. Award. And I was like, yeah, I know he was in San Diego for that. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was a great time. <laughs> I bet. And you also hosted um, the Top 100 Business Podcast in iTunes. Now, yeah. I did check. I was not on that list. But um, oh. <laughs> it will be there next. So you did that. You also a recipient of the Army Achievement Medal. Yes. For, for mer- mer- Meritorious Service. Yes. Yes. I would, they, they call it AAM. I was in the 82nd Airborne okay. um, back in the day. And uh, yeah, it was pretty, pretty nice to be um, awarded this medal. A, a, a lot of military are awarded some, something very similar, okay. um, but it was, it was just nice to be recognized. And, and uh, yeah, it was, it was a good experience for me. Um, Lord, am I glad I'm out and I'm a veteran, but uh, it it definitely taught me a lot about responsibility and personal character. Oh, well, thank you for your service. Oh, thank you. (laughs) I I, I have a number of family members in the service. My son-in-law, he's special forces, my brother's Air Force, and I have a nephew who's Army. Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> and, my, my, and my ex-husband was Coast Guard, so we pretty much... <laughs> oh, you got all the branches. <laughs> yeah, we had all branches covered. <laughs> so, but thank you for that. And then you were also co-founded and operated a publishing company. Yes, we did. I had a... Um, this is where I kind of got into uh, the virtual assistants in 2006. Oh, okay. Um, we started a creative ad agency for that was real estate focused. Mm-hmm. And okay. uh, we started a publication. Um, it was distributed to 12,000 uh, different locations. And this was in Central California. And so we, we had a blast with that. Um, and that's where the beginning of my challenges actually started. Because in 2008... Uh, the financial crisis hit hard yeah, and mm-hmm. we were real estate focused, as you can imagine. Ooh, um, and yes, this is, and, and this, this is a little sidebar. And I'm sorry if, if it, is it okay oh, if right. I take a little side tangent here? Go for it. So I was very immature. I, I, I was terrible with my money. I was not doing what I should have been doing in that um, I spent money as it came in. We were rocking and it was, oh, it's always going to be there. And then reality slammed yeah. a door right in my face and stopped everything. Mm-hmm. And at the age of 38, I had moved back in with my mom and, okay. and dad. And, and as you can imagine, that's not easy to do, yeah. <laughs> um, to be able to do that. Um, and I vowed at that very moment, whatever I was going to be doing, I had to do I had to do something that was going to be helping people out that would make them recession proof and help prepare them for this. Because I noticed the first thing that went when this big, oh, I have yeah. so many curse words coming to my head, but it was my fault. <laughs> but I, the first thing I noticed is that companies, when, when the finances are tightened up, advertising right. is first. Advertising. And, and then what's next is... And marketing goes, and that's what they should be staying focused on. Exactly. And what's the next thing? They start letting people off. Right. So bottleneck is is about as recession proof as I can possibly think of to help scaling companies grow even through times financial crises. And the reason being is that you don't have all the overhead. Right. That you would in a regular office. Right. I mean, the soft costs, just the internet, the office space, things like that. A great example is one of the medical offices I went and visited. They took one of the exam rooms and turned that into an office space for two medical billers. Well, they just got rid of one of their profit centers. 
And so what if you took that away, did it remotely, right. still had the billing, but now you opened up a profit center. It's going to help out more patients first and foremost, right. but it's also going to help the doctor with more profitability so that he can see more people, keep his doors open longer right. and help more people in essence. Yeah, because it even affected the, the, the professional, the white collar professional like that. Everybody. Everybody, yeah. I, you know, I'm, you know, we just talked about this with one of my doctor clients recently. You now, I mean, when, you know, growing up, it's like, you know, doctors are bulletproof. You know, nothing is ever going to affect them. Uh, the, the way the economy has changed, the way insurance companies have changed, they're just like any other entrepreneur trying to fill the, fill the you know, fill their calendar. And exactly. Bringing people in the door. So, yeah, I mean, everybody, everybody was affected by that. Uh-huh. And so it, it's, it's incredible. At that time, well, early on, um, I was a financial advisor. Oh, and, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> we need to say no more to, uh-huh. to say that. It, it, it wasn't my favorite career. <laughs> it wasn't my. It wasn't my best moment. <laughs> right. <laughs> we, we, we had to move on. It was not my best moment, so we had to go from there. So, a couple questions that I have for all of my guests. So, what makes you unstoppable? And I think you shared some of that. Yeah, that. Boy, I could really go into some pretty dark places, and I don't want to do that right now because I've had some really big challenges in my life. Mm. But some of the, but I think what makes me unstoppable is the simple fact that I find so much happiness in helping other people realize their dreams. And a lot of people want to get there. They just don't know how to, how get, there. to get there. And, and from, if I'm looking through the lens mm. of, of my life experiences mm. in seeing the really, really dark times, but also seeing the best of times mm. and knowing that even when you get down in the trenches and there's ultimately no way out of it. And, and, and I know this may sound a little cheesy, but it, but it really is my, my big unstoppable passion. This is what keeps me going gets one step in front of the other every single day because I have a chance to help somebody. And now that I've been doing it a while, I'm starting to see people that are coming back and I've seen where they've been and where they are now. And it's all them. It's a credit to them for being just awesome people and entrepreneurs. But what's really cool about it is that, wow, you're able to share some of your experiences Something that we've created, and I say we, it's my company, but we've created my team, me, my girlfriend, um, my family, they've all been there. Mm -hmm. So I say we've created something that was never there before. I think that's what makes me unstoppable because I always, it's such a good feeling. That's the dopamine rush (laughs) going in on my head right now. Yeah, yeah, I get time, you know, you get to see that. Well, we're we're not too far apart that way. And our timeline is about the same two, 12 years. And again, we've had, you know, ups and downs, no challenges along the way. Trust (laughs) me. And, you know, just last, this past spring, I had a crash, the website crashed because we had too many hits to the website. We had seven, over 730,000 hits. Oh my goodness. In 24 <laughs> hours. And we were setting up for an event in, in LA and we, we had to, you know, there was no way. I mean, we couldn't get registrations and, but the thing that, always keeps me going is that and even even then i'm i'm i I had to really take a a really close look like you said through that lens and say what is it that keeps me going time after time after time and it's the fact that i am helping other people Mm. i am helping other people i you know i'm giving them those best practice tools and i'm saying you know this is how you want to do it and this is what to avoid so you don't have a crash even though it's like okay you know i kept saying to the team well i don't think kim kardashian had this problem (laughs) 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 and and, uh, i even wanted to do that pose but they wouldn't let me um (laughs) So, but we we regrouped and, you know, we continue moving forward and and we have people that have come back. I said, I had to let some team members go. We had a, you know, clean house and, you know, people came back 
And I really thought it was going to to hurt the brand, but it really didn't. And I believe it didn't because we were unstoppable. Mm-hmm. And we said, okay, you know, we, we fix that and we're going to continue going and we're just not having an event this year. We'll have it next year. And, you know, the sponsors stayed, the people who were going to, you know, um, come hang out and speak with us stayed. And we were doing um, a global event and we weren't filling a room like a conference. We had speakers coming and we had cameras, three cameras, and we were doing a global event around the world. So our now marketing team is so awesome. And that's why we ran into that problem. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that tells me a lot about who you are as far as what you do and what you stand for. And it really brings to the forefront how important it is to communicate because yeah. shit will hit the fan. I forgive my French. And I had one of the speakers pissed because it happened. I mean, and just because of her, I was shaken up. I, I mean, I was totally shaken and it took me a bit of time to, all right, let me just get over this. Um, but then after I came back and I said, you know what? That's one person. But if mm-hmm. I could help 20 person or the 728,000 who want to be part of it, that meant more to me knowing that we can help, you know, we can help that, that individual. And you're not going to make everybody happy. No. You know, you and you have to understand that. And it sucks that you have to have thick skin. But as a business yeah. leader, unfortunately, and you know, you're really starting to do good when you start getting that negative in the, the yes. you know, the chatty Cathy's and the, you yeah, know, the, yeah. the, the, you're just starting to feel uh, that and getting sued for the first time. You've made it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I wouldn't recommend Woo. that, but well, I, that was what that was with the trademark. That's why everybody kept saying, no, you've made it. You got sued. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it is, that's part of, that's part of the, the growth. But yeah. what I, I love negative feedback. Because those are what I focus on to turn around into the positives. Right. All my frequently asked questions, mm-hmm. that's all come from objections or yeah. negative feedback or things yeah. that people didn't understand. And it forced me to gain direction. And now, if I can go off on one other tangent, there's a big difference between clarity and direction. And this, this I hope, this is really important. It was at least for me. Okay. One of the biggest challenges that we have is, and when I say we, I'm talking about business leaders, us, us people that lead a right. company or a team, mm-hmm. is that we think it's so important to see what that end goal is and define that as clarity. Mm-hmm. The challenge is, as most of us know, there's hills and valleys. Yes. How in the world can you see what's happening in New York if you're in California, but you know you need to get there? You can't. You can only see to the end of that street or the end of that road right. or around that next corner. What you can be clear about is looking at a map mm-hmm. and understanding what direction you need to go yes. in order to get to New York. And one of the biggest problems is we all automatically assume, oh, OK, I want to be here in five years. Cool. I've got clarity. But you need direction need and direction. good leaders that define good direction right. will have people follow them right. all the way across the nation. And that, and that was the one thing that I found, like I said, and that just happened this, this past spring. Um, and we were going, going great. But the one thing that gave me that encouragement was something similar to what you're saying. And it happened to be somebody in New York. <laughs> <laughs> And that, I was the one that was like, okay, I can't do that. You know, I, <laughs> I lost my, you know, integrity, whatever. And he calls me and he was like, oh, what the hell are you? What are you doing? And I'm like, you know, like sitting here like a oh, little mouse. Oh, somebody's mad at me. He's like, are you insane? He's like, you know, everything that you've been through for the last 12 years. And, you know, he was there for the couple. He goes, you're going to let this get you down? Yeah. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> and he's like, all right, we'll see you in New York in December. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And, 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 and sometimes you do need somebody like that. And, A little and kick I know in the rear. Yeah, you need that kick in the rear. And I have the one doctor that I work with. And, and I asked him that recently. I've been working with them for over five years. 
And I said, why do you keep hiring me year after year after year? I, I'm like, what do I do for you? He goes, because you kick me in the rear. He goes, and you keep oh. me going. Yeah, because he's still doctoring, but he does a fantastic customer service program for urgent care groups. Mm. You know, and of course, sometimes he's tired or whatever. And I'm, you know, behind him saying, let's go. We got, we got it. You know, we have an event. Let's go. I'll pick you up on the way. We're going. And so he said, he goes, you keep me going. He goes, and that's what I need. Oh. And so, you know, just, you know, and again, just to hear something like that. But yeah, but we can't, we can't give up. Um, I mean, again, and great leaders will find a way to, to get there. And like you said, have that roadmap, that roadmap to get there. I would love to keep talking with you, Jamie, but we got to go. <laughs> <laughs> we we got to go here. Um, so I know, let me just finish real quick. So I know that you have a giveaway for our listeners. 100% of our listeners are going to receive a free consultation from you. Yes. All they have to do is they go to bottleneck.online forward slash inquiry. And where it says promo code, just type in Connie. Okay. Okay. And I'll make sure that I add that in our description as well. And your website is bottleneck.online. Do I have that correctly? That is correct. Bottleneck.online. Okay. Bottleneck.online. All right. Just just, just think a bottle of beer. It's <laughs> bottleneck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it makes me sound like I'm a beer drinker. I'm not. I used to be. <laughs> I've, I've moved up to scotch. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jamie, I want to thank you for being here. Uh, I love the work that you're doing. I mean, it's just it's incredible. And I just really enjoyed our conversation. And you are welcome back anytime because we have oh. a lot more to talk about. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> well, I just want to close with... All of you out there, every great entrepreneur knows their why. Every great leader who knows their why inspire others to take action. And every great leader knows that you are going to trip over some shit sometimes, but you just need to keep on going. <laughs> so, so start with that. We all just want you to start with that. And you could take that to your team. Use that for your entrepreneurial game, your entrepreneurial business success will then come to you. And you can learn more how to find your place and where you need to go next uh, with Jamie, with Jamie J. And you need to get his 100% of our listeners are going to free, receive his free consultation. So I'll make sure I add the instructions right here in our show description. So follow them and just head on over and you'll schedule some time with Jamie and get some clarity with him and find out where you can find and achieve your success. So what I enjoy most is providing you, our listeners, the tools and resources to live your dreams. So hang in there with us each week because we are moving ideas forward and keeping the passion of life activated. We remember now we have feature advertising available. So you want to check it out on our website at activatemypower.com and or I should say activatemypower.com but also head over to the com, our new website for our show as well and the Fife Group team is ridiculously dedicated to inspiring individuals just like you to activate your power and live your dream as a lifestyle entrepreneur and I'm going to leave you with this thought when your why is big enough you will find your how so when you want to get to New York City, you're going to get that map and you're going to find your way there. You're listening to The Connie Five Show. If you like what you're hearing, like us and share us with your friends and colleagues. And also make sure you subscribe with us on iTunes. Until next time, activate your power, be unstoppable together and keep moving ideas forward. Hey, y'all. Thanks for listening to Up or Out with Connie. If you like what you hear and would like to be a guest, email the team at bookme at uporout.com. Learn how you can activate your power at activatemypower.com. We'll see you over there. Activate your power and be unstoppable together.